welcome to Kiddo and Janko Wednesdays at Lunch Burger Edition. Oh, we lost you already. <laughs> it's because I thought I was doing the intro. Um, I thought I did the intro. I thought that was part of it. That's it. Okay, we can do You that. could do it. No, 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 no you, you can, can do, do it. the intro. No, I like you doing it. Um, all right, let's go again. <laughs> um, I just laughed at the thought of what you might say. Okay. Maybe, cl- maybe snap again? Welcome to Kadoan Janko Wednesdays at Lunch, Burger, Burger edition. edition. I'm Seba. This is Matt. Hey. And this week, we went to Jukebox Burgers in the Marche de l'Ouest, in the West Island of Montreal. And uh, Matthew, uh, first first thoughts of this uh, second uh, burger joint that we got to go and see. Well, I, I enjoyed that it was a, a bit of a spur of the moment burger run that's true uh, not so much i mean it was very planned out but well, we knew that we were going to go for a burger yeah. but the decision on where to go went from somewhere two blocks away from you to somewhere a half hour drive very spur of the moment yeah and um the west island has always been a special place in my heart why is that matthew i just oh, i like it that's it i like uh like the the trees the I'm- Little villages that they have. I mean, to me, it's it, like uh, at least the area that we went to is just a series of strip malls. Well, yeah, we were in the, the strip mall section of it, but they have an area that's uh, more family oriented, a lot of little mom and pop pizza places. And... In strip malls? No, no, no. There's a village. There's a, the Point Claire village. I guess that's true. That's true. It's like an old, old town. Yeah, yeah. They got Beaver Hall. Oh, yeah? Uh, tons of stuff. Yeah, my grandparents used to live out that way. There you go. It yeah. took some digging, but now I found out why you've <laughs> got warm memories about the Point Claire area. I just feel like everybody's grandparents live in Point Claire. Uh, none of mine. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, so uh, the we, Jukebox Burgers in a, a strip mall. There were a ton of other burger joints, too, that I spotted and uh, thought about eating as well. But we were sort of on a mission. There was a Five Guys. There was a Wendy's couple other joints. Yeah. We were on a mission, though. We decided Jukebox Burgers. Uh, uh, it's sort of a diner, 1950s diner style. They've got Elvis Gold Records on the wall. There was like a half a car on yeah, the far was, wall. It was loosely based on the 50s, I think. There was we, a, Yeah, pretty loosely. You know, they needed to remove the, the flat screens and the any music that, uh, you know, post-states the era. Well, I mean, they had a big touchscreen jukebox, which suits what the place is. There ought to be a jukebox, but in my opinion, it should be a record-powered jukebox, a vinyl jukebox. Yeah. Anyway. And it shouldn't be a uh, you know Fifty Cent or whatever we were listening to on there. Well, it was it was Drake. It wasn't Fifty Cent? I feel like Fifty Cent's a little more gangsta, but <laughs> Wait, whatever. Fifty cents. 50, 50 cent. Oh, like it would cost 50 cents? No, I thought you just said 50 cents. Like the. I think I probably said it 50, 50 cent is. Oh, yeah. 50, 50 cents cent a little is. more. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's not. When we walked in, it was uh, Matchbox 20. It was Matchbox 20, which felt a little. Uh, we were reminiscing right away as soon yeah. as we walked in, heard 3 a.m. from Matchbox 20, bringing us back to, you know, the late 90s. Yeah. Maybe early 2000s, just about oh. reminiscing nostalgia that all fits into that uh, classic diner decor that they were going for. Yeah. Very similar to uh, the the Nichols decor. I don't know how many Nichols are left. I always liked Nichols. Mm. I don't know how you felt about Nichols. Oh, I, I dislike Nichols. Why did you dislike Nichols? Uh, it's the food? I think I need, I need to start being able to back up the things I say I dislike. I just, well, no, it's your opinion. I you dis- could feel the way you want to feel. Yeah. Uh, I never found the food to be very good. Okay. I once heard a story about uh, someone finding uh, a nickel, like a bug, a bug in uh in, I don't know, like maybe a cockroach or something. That seems a little extreme. I've never personally even seen a cockroach. So really? Yeah. I'm sure I have. I don't know where. Hmm. Maybe the insectarium. <laughs> I've seen a lot Which of things. Would be the most I've seen a lot of place. things at zoos that I don't come across in my day to day. Okay. Um, but. And the whole, the I never really understood their concept. It was you buy one meal, you get another one for a nickel, but it never really seemed to apply to anything. I don't remember that deal. Yeah, well, I think that was why they went by nickels, like get a whole meal for a nickel. Really? Yeah. 
That seems crazy. But it was like a select meal at a select time, and you had to order something else first. And I don't, I don't know how it worked. But my my impression was just sort of nickels. Like you may have been able to get these meals for a nickel in a different time, yeah. or operate a jukebox for a nickel in a different time. Well, my information might be uh, might be faulty. Maybe they had yeah. like kids kids meal deals. Yeah, that were a nickel. I wish if they had a jukebox for a nickel. I imagine at some point jukeboxes were a nickel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they'd need some sort of like schemer character from, from <laughs> yes. Shining Time to go around with his little change. With uh, a little, little, little change dispenser on his hip. Yeah. And I'm not asking for cowboys inside the jukebox to, to play all of my songs. but just, That's just true. A that was a thing on Shining Time Station. Weren't, oh. they, weren't they little uh, uh, marionette cowboys playing the songs on the jukebox? Yeah, yeah. And they decided what song to play. Uh, it's not, a terrible like, jukebox. Yeah, that's true. You put you put your nickels in, and then they get a low rent live version of whatever you want to hear. Yeah, as and opposed it, to exactly what you want to hear. Yeah, and you don't get to hear what you want to hear. Yeah, and and not only that, but there's a good delay, maybe two minute delay. You put While that they nickel discuss in. what they're gonna play. Yeah, then we see that nickel. It cuts to inside the jukebox. The nickel that's rolls right, in. That's right. They say, "Hey, there's a nickel coming," and then they just argue and you know decide what they want to play. To me, that's like the most forgettable aspect of Shining Time Station. I completely forgot about it until you brought it up just now. I mean, aside from the trains, which I wasn't crazy about. Well, I mean, uh, that was kind of pretty much the main thing. <laughs> to me, the jukebox was like the thing to watch for. Jukebox was the highlight? Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I never really understood even what Schemer was doing because he seemed like the one who owned the jukebox uh, and he collected a percentage of what it made. By yeah, being I believe inside. so. I kind of like how, you know, candy, you know, gumball machines, like who owns those if yeah. not the mall that they're in? Exactly. That's probably a company. Yeah. Uh, and they split the weight, they split the, the earnings. It was like he was the manager of the arcade section of the station. Yeah. But really it was just, he just hung around and he was crazy for nickels. He was scheming. Yeah. He was scheming. always figuring out this next <laughs> his next big plan to get some more nickels. Nickels that up, Matthew. But I believe... I think his plan was just how how can he get people to put it nickels into that jukebox? I think if those cowboys knew who who was uh, pulling the strings, they might they might opt out. Well, I mean, until uh, for a while it's Schemer, but then Schemey comes on the scene. Remember Schemey, his like nephew who dressed and acted the same way. <laughs> you just basically have to slick your hair back and and do a little side curl. Yeah, he had a single curl off the side of his head. <laughs> As I recall. See, you remember. You remember his... His, uh... his hairstyle. <laughs> but I didn't remember the characters in the jukebox. I completely forgot about that aspect. Mm. I remember that uh, the the two uh, Mr... What was Mr. Conductor? The mm. two Mr. Conductors were Ringo Starr and George Carlin. Yeah, see, I don't remember that. Which seems like a really weird one-two punch. I don't know how they replace one with the other. Or how they even get either of those guys to do that show. <laughs> one is a Beatle, has no need to do this children's show. The other is like one of the uh, most biting, uh, vulgar comics of all time. Should not be on this show. I don't understand how they cast this these two guys onto this show. To be like the main character to tell young children <laughs> stories on this show. It makes no <laughs> sense to me. And it was a Canadian show, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. It may have been an American sh show. Yeah, Thomas seems pretty, pretty popular all around. I think, but yeah, but he was British. Yeah, but you don't have to be British to. But people just like British in shows sometimes. That's true. When it's not too much. Maybe, of it. I guess he wasn't British because it was just the storyteller who was British because he was Ringo Starr. Wait, Ringo Starr was British. George Carlin was just George Carlin. He yeah. Wasn't, okay. And like all the people in Shining Time Station had like a North American accent. Yeah, one of them was Native American. Which makes me think even more that it was yeah. a Canadian program. Wasn't one of them? Wasn't the the guy who would always, the Native American guy who would give uh, helpful life lessons, wasn't he the guy on Due South? I never watched Due South, but I That just, I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. I shouldn't talk about things yeah. that I've only seen the slip cover on the DVDs for. <laughs> the DVD slip cover? I mean, I've seen a couple episodes of Due South, but I don't recall there being a... A, a native uh, as a regular cast member of that show. Oh, okay. 
I mean, it was really the two guys in his his husky or wolf or whatever it was. Yeah. But I, uh, that's a good point though about George Carlin. I'd like to I'd like to see the outtakes. See oh how many God. times he may have just and like was was he actually because he was always speaking with children. So I wonder if he was like on set, but just off to the right speaking to the children, or it was just like he was there. They said, George, we need you to come in, put on the suit. Here's a green screen. Run your lines. Thanks, George. Call it a day. Yeah. Because he was I, tiny. He was obviously wasn't actually tiny. It wasn't like a <laughs> trick of the camera. They did that in post. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I imagine the idea would be to have George Carlin around children as little as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Just to play it safe. Yeah. There's a lot of families probably on set, you know, the the parents of those kids might be there. And you don't want someone like George Carlin just rubbing elbows with your parents. I see what you mean. I don't think George Carlin was like an unruly, couldn't hold back type of guy. I think he was obviously a really <laughs> sharp guy who could not swear sometimes. But it just seems so ironic that uh, a, a stand-up comedian who was sort of like known for his, his vulgar way of being uh, on stage, maybe not known for that, but was part of it uh, uh would be on a children's show it just seems so strange yeah. and especially that he replaced Ringo Starr doesn't well, make sense to me who would you rather have replaced who would make sense to replace Ringo Starr that's a good question i don't know david bowie yeah but if we get off of the musician you know if you're not going to replace a musician with a musician do you replace them with uh, i mean for a children's show in my mind like replace them with whoever because yeah, the really kids aren't matter. going like, oh, Ringo. Holy cow, I can't believe I'm watching Ringo. When I was a kid, I had no idea who he was. He was just Mr. Conductor. And eventually, Mr. Conductor's beard got white and the actor changed. The actor changed because they went with George Carlin after a while. I guess yeah. Ringo was done doing it. He was fed up. But that change is so strange. <laughs> Except that they both had beards and were white guys. Yeah, well, I guess that's all you need. That's all the criteria. Uh... Now, I don't know if you remember this. They made a movie, eventually. A Thomas the Tank Engine movie, where there was a new Mr. Conductor. Do you remember who that was? I do not. It was Alec Baldwin. Oh, yes. I can picture him perfectly. Just, did you see this movie, or are you just <laughs> using your imagination? Oh, I'm just using my imagination. <laughs> okay. Because that's the... a third Mr. Conductor which is, again, like a very different direction from the previous two, not even a beard. I don't want my Alec Baldwin with a beard. I saw, I saw a bit of a beard on him, and I don't like it. Yeah, me either. I can't even recall a time with Alec Baldwin had a beard. Yeah. I don't want to. Mm. Seen him with a five o'clock shadow, and I want no more than that. I don't know. <laughs> now, now, circling back to Nichols. Yes. Um, you didn't like the food. Well, we weren't at Nichols because there was a. That's true. That's true. Nichols doesn't exist anymore. That's true. Now I'm sad that Nichols doesn't exist anymore because I like Nichols. I I pretty much always got the lasagna at Nichols, so I pretty much just associated with that. I was pretty dead set on the lasagna at Nichols. Came out real hot, burning hot. They always warned you. Um, uh, uh. <laughs> I didn't really get anything else ever at Nichols. I don't remember what was on the menu other than maybe smoked meat sandwiches or hamburgers, other classic diner fare. Well, what were you getting at Nichols? Uh, the same thing I pretty much got everywhere. Same thing I would get at Pizza Hut, same thing I would get at, uh, well, I don't go to too many restaurants, but I used to get spaghetti. They got spaghetti at Pizza Hut? Uh, yeah. It's not very good, okay. but, <laughs> uh, but that's what I would get, spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, I did like the spaghetti at Nichols, if I can recall. <laughs> Except there, there was one time um, where they were offering. Uh, this is kind of a strange, strange thing, but uh, they were offering free spaghetti to people who went to the school nearby, uh, which had recently been uh, part of a school shooting. So if you attend a school during a school shooting, free spaghetti for you. I don't know if it's a, a standard. I don't know if it happens at everyone. I, I um, don't. I, I'm pretty sure in the existence, in the lifespan of Nichols, there was probably only one school shooting 
Yeah, but maybe other restaurants. I mean, I don't. Maybe they they omitted that from Bowling for Columbine, but 